last time on the cheapest and the crappiest smart car anywhere, probably. I bought it, drove it on Oregon, brought it out of a motorhome, brought it back, realized just how bad this thing was, kind of showed an in-depth in look at that. I've started to take a bit of it apart. As you can see, this now just comes off. I uh, pulled the rear tow bar off it, which is sitting somewhere in that mess of many things. This should also, okay, that one requires a little more work. I won't do that right now. But I decided I need a lot of parts to get this thing to where anyone would want it, including myself. So I went and bought a couple seats for it, bought some wheels and tires, and then I decided, you know, that's not going to be enough. So I bought another one. So I'll give you a little overview of this peach here. Uh, it's obviously missing some things, in case you didn't notice. Some of the stuff I'm going to have to pull off that car or put onto that car. Some of the stuff I have, like the bumper, I have that. Don't have the little hood piece. And that one doesn't either. Well, it doesn't have one without a hole in it. So I'm going to have to find a new one of those. And it also doesn't have any seats. But conveniently, I already bought the seats out of this. And that's when I saw this car and thought, I should probably just buy the whole car. That's going to be cheaper than trying to mix and match all the pieces that I need. And thankfully, this one does not have spray paint across everything on the interior, which for some reason that one does. It has a shifter without a hole in it, which is nice. It has cup holders. It has a battery, which probably works. Uh, it has a radio, because the other one does not. It has AC, which probably doesn't work, but who cares? It has no spray paint on the dash, which is nice. It has no mirror. But as with everything that I buy, there are downsides. It does have a salvage title because it got a little oof right there. And it does have a blown head gasket, but conveniently, I've got one right here. So I will slap that one in there and hopefully it runs without blowing something else up or the head being warped, something like that. But worst case, I have a backup engine that also could have a blown head gasket. I have no idea. So the decision I find myself currently at is whether or not I should pull the windshield and the roof and the doors and everything I can and put them on that car or pull the fenders and some of the other small things from that car onto this one with it having a salvage title. But I still think that that dent there is better than whatever's happened to that car. So now with the front end completely off of the black car, it's time to start working on the white car. Uh, this car came already without a front end, so I'm going to put that on here. Uh, first things first, this thing needs a new head gasket. And I have a new head gasket in a box right there, so let's get to dropping the engine. out of the white car. I'm going to start pulling it apart, get a new head gasket in there. Uh, but I did want to show a couple of interesting things that I've been noticing on this black one here. Uh, to add to why I'm going to make that one drive and not this one. Uh, I mean, cosmetically, painted over the warning stickers, the light, the mirror. And I've got the shifter in here from the white car. Uh, I'm using that to try and get this engine to start or crank over or something. Because this shifter, the one that came in the black car, has been butchered. And it will not communicate with the car. So it doesn't know what gear it's in. So I can't even crank over the engine. So I'm hoping that I can get this one to at least communicate with the car. 
let it just crank over or try and fire and then I can know whether or not this engine actually works. As soon as I pulled off the valve cover, I knew something is wrong because there's a lot of smells that can come from an engine, but burnt plastic is not usually one of them. This is where the plastic smell came from because the dipstick usually doesn't end that short. This one got melted because you can see the difference in cam color. This one got hot enough to not only break in half, but to melt through the caps, break all of the caps, and then singe the valve cover. And all that little stuff there, that's metal. And there's some chunks down there too. And I was told when I bought this car, I asked very specifically, if I put a new head gasket in it, will it run and drive? And he said, yes. That is not true. So at this point, I'm gonna continue disassembling this engine, but purely for fun. Kinda wanna see what happened. I'm assuming it lost oil pressure and the bottom cam was kinda floating around and the residual oil there and the upper cam was not. But my disassembly will be a bit more destructive because this engine is not going back in anything. So I've got the cam caps off now and you can really see the difference between the exhaust cam which had some oil and the intake cam which did not. These ones have not fared so well. I think they kind of wore into the cam. I think this right here is part of the cam. Uh, you see that's not supposed to be like that. This is obviously not supposed to be like that. And now with the cams off, you can see how far it's been wearing into the actual head. Like you can see this, pretty smooth. Quite a bit of material left. This one, it's it's coming right off which is not what you want. Cam, obviously, two different pieces. Again, not what you want. Part of it is broken off on the front here. I think I figured out why this thing lost oil pressure. Because that's all the oil that was in it. This is the filter. So I'm guessing they hit something with the filter and that put a little hole in it and then all the oil went out and the engine broke.
Uh, before I get into this too much, I do want to mention, if you plan on reusing any parts from your engine, don't do what I did. Don't use the impact. Don't use pliers to take out the lifters. This engine is never going back together, so I don't care. And there was no surprises with the head. Everything looks fine under here. As far as the rods and pistons go, uh, they're all pretty dark. The middle one here does not move. I cannot get the piston to rotate at all. So I think that one got pretty well cooked in there. The other two look pretty fine. This is the crank here. Looks just fine, actually. I uh, definitely scraped it around a little bit, so not worth using, so that is a paperweight now. Same as the rest of the engine. Crank caps look good. Uh, bearings look actually not too bad. This is one of the rod bearings. And you can tell just by looking down the, the block here. Cylinder two is the one with all the dark metal spots and everything. Was the other two doing all right? And in the pan, it's just full of metal. That is just all metal paste. And thus ends the story of the white car's engine. Next up is to pull the engine out of that one. I have not been able to confirm if it actually runs or not. I have not been able to get the shifter to communicate with the car. It just keeps giving me the three bars of death on the dash, but hoping it runs, but I'm gonna find out. But regardless of all that, this is gonna do it for this episode of Smart Car Escapades. I've got some major cleanup to do. Until next time.